Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Um, recognizing quorum, I'm calling this meeting of the Cannabis Control Commission to order at 10 a.m. on May 16th, 2019. Um, can I ask, uh, can everybody in the back hear me? I get affirmation, thank you very much. Um, can I ask, uh, is this meeting being recorded? Uh, let me put the public on notice this meeting is being recorded. Um, can I ask everybody please to turn their cell phones off or put them on silent? Thank you. Um, Commissioner Flanagan is joining us remotely uh, via phone. Uh, Commissioner Flanagan, would you speak so that I can make sure everybody can hear you? I'm here. Let's see if I can turn the volume up a little bit. Would you try that again, please? Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Can everybody hear Commissioner Flanagan? Great. Okay, thank you. Um, and my, uh, my thanks to the uh, Health Policy Commission for uh, letting us uh, use their facilities. We are uh, deeply grateful for that. Um, I'm going to quickly go through the agenda and then uh, get started. Uh, I don't know how long the meeting will go, but we do have a hard stop at 2 p.m. since uh, the Health Policy Commission needs this meeting for uh, this room for a board meeting. So uh, I think we'll be done before 2, but uh, in any case, we have a hard stop at 2 p.m. Uh, let me go through the agenda. Uh, we. Uh, do not have a, an executive director's report today, and that is just the process of uh, a a lot of things on our plate. B um, implementing our open data architecture. Um, so I just want to set expectations. Uh, we will in our next meeting go back to our normal format in terms of having the executive director's report as well as all the licensing updates. But we will not cover that today. Um, we have one final license to uh, discuss and uh, and vote upon, which is uh, a medical vertically integrated license. We have 13 provisional license applications uh, that we'll go through, and then we have one um, discussion on uh, um, a change of ownership application, which uh, will be uh, um, zero naturals. Um, we have one open policy issue with respect to regulations, uh, and that's social consumption. So we will um, um, have a discussion. Uh, we have appointed um, <coughs> a social consumption or we had constituted a social consumption working group. Um, they have made a report to the executive director. The executive director has circulated that to the commission. We will discuss and debate and vote on that. And uh, I think that's it um, in terms of our agenda. So uh, let's get started. As I said, uh, we will probably take a break somewhere, uh, I would say plus or minus noon. Um, and I expect we will be done before two, but no later than two. Uh, because uh, Commissioner Flanagan is dialing in remotely, um, all votes will be uh, voice votes. Um, I wanted to just uh, put one thing on the table before we got into the rest of the agenda because I know that uh, if people are interested and I'm not sure that uh, people are 100% clear about where, what the process and timeline is for the regulatory process we're going through right now. So I just wanted to make sure there were no questions, no uncertainty. We are meeting today um, and uh, we uh, are going to only, um, excuse me, we're only discuss social consumption um, from a policy level. We will not discuss today any regulations, including that of social consumption, if we decide to approve it. Um, we will meet again on May 30th uh, to go through the entire set of draft regulations, including all the policy discussions and decisions we made at our previous meeting as well as today. And uh, hopefully we will uh, um, vote to approve those regulations so they will be promulgated by the uh, Secretary, through the Secretary of State's office. And we will open our public comment period as soon as that meeting is concluded. Um, I want to caveat it that right now uh, we have one day scheduled on May 30th. We have a spillover date on May 31st in case we need that time. So the public comment period will open whenever we're finished with the meeting, be it the 30th or the 31st. Um, during that public comment period, we will have two public hearings, one in Springfield um, on June 25th and one in Boston on June 26th. At the conclusion of the Boston public hearing, the public comment period will close as well. We will then um, get back together um, in a public meeting on July 18th with also a spillover if necessary on July 19th to uh, discuss the feedback we got during the public comment period and from the public hearings discuss and debate whether we want to make any changes to our draft regulations as a result of that, and then vote on and approve a set of final regulations on the 18th or the 19th. So that's, uh, that's the timeline. It's, I think, what we committed to last year in terms of uh, a spring process. So uh, uh, we're right on schedule for that. We have a lot more work to do. It's a good time to thank the staff, particularly our general counsel, um, for her leadership uh, on working through um, a complex set of regulations, both on the adult use side and on the medical side, and making sure that they embed 
all the changes that we've discussed in terms of our policy discussion. So thank you to uh, our general counsel and to the staff on that. Um, before I get into the, uh, the agenda and starting with final licenses, so Mr. Executive Director, I know we're not making the formal report, but are there any issues or topics that you uh, would like to raise or need uh, commission input on? Not just Okay, thank you. So then uh, let's go through uh, the licensing process. Uh, we had one final license, as I mentioned, and that is uh, for Garden Remedies, which is a vertically integrated medical marijuana treatment center in RMD. Mr. Pachman, are you leading us through this? Or Mr. Uh, Executive Director? Mr. Pachman. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Commissioner Tyler needs to recuse himself on this. So once she's out of the room. Go ahead, Mr. Potter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you stated, the licensee here is Goddard Remedies. The proposed location is 416 Boston Post Road in Marlboro, Mass. The addresses of the Medical Marijuana Treatment Center for this license is for cultivation and product manufacturing operations. They're planned to be located at 307 Airport Road in Fitchburg, and the dispensary will be located at 416 Boston Post Road in Marlboro. The licensee was approved pre previously for a provisional license on December 5th of 2018. The licensee has paid all applicable fees. No new information has re been reported to the commission staff regarding the organizational structure of the entity since the issuance of the provisional license. Also, no new information has been discovered by commission staff regarding the suitability of the license. facility on March 27th, 2019. The cultivation and processing facilities were inspected on April 19th. The licensee's medical marijuana treatment center was inspected by commission staff and found to be in full compliance with the commission's regulations. No evidence was discovered during the inspections that indicated that the center was not in compliance with any applicable state or local codes, bylaws, laws, ordinances, and regulations. As is usual with all final licenses, they are inspected for security, inventory, and storage, their cultivation operations, product manufacturing operations, and dispensing operations. All of those operations were deemed to be fully compliant with the Commission's regulations. Therefore, Commission staff do recommend issuing a final license with the following conditions. First, that the licensee may cultivate, harvest, possess, prepare, produce, and otherwise acquire marijuana but shall not dispense, sell, or otherwise transport marijuana to any other centers or to patients until upon inspection receiving permission from the commission to commence full operations. The licensee is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. The licensee must remain suitable for licensure. The licensee shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, licensure is subject to notification to the commission of any update to written operations plans required under the commission's regulations prior to the issuance of the commencement of operations. Additionally, commission staff should be given adequate opportunity to re, uh, review said plans at the business location or at the location where any such plans are retained in the normal course of business. The licensee has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure. Therefore, the licensee is recommended for final licensure. As part of this approval, the commission authorizes staff to take all necessary actions to review compliance with the above reference conditions and to approve the commencement of operations. Thank you, Mr. Buffett. Other questions? Then um, may I ask please for a motion to approve the staff recommendation? So moved. Uh, can I have a second, please? Second. Uh, let the record chair of the commission make right make the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. Uh, we're gonna do a voice vote as I mentioned. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman, aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that uh, the commission approved staff recommendation by a vote of four in favor. Commissioners Doyle, Hoffman, McBride, and Flanagan with Commissioner Title recused. Thank you very much. Can we uh, get Commissioner Title back in? Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Poppin, next um, are our provisional licenses, um, starting with Caregiver Patient Connection, MRN 282131 for retail. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> As you stated, the applicant is Caregiver Patient Connection. The proposed location is 371 Lunenburg Street in Fitchburg. The license, 
I'm sorry. I think it's, isn't it Lunenburg? Lunenburg? I think so. Anybody from there? <laughs> it is Lunenburg. It is Lunenburg. My apologies. No, I, to, <laughs> apologies <laughs> to the town, not to me. <laughs> um, the license being sought here is a retail license. The applicant is a licensee, a uh, provisional licensee for a cultivation um, operation tier two indoor located in Bari. The list of the required individuals that are associated with this establishment are Dean Iandoli, Catherine Trefulo, Michael Sadi, and Richard Alstein, all as owners and partners, Rana Lecure as the head of security, and Thomas Powers as a board member. There are no other entities other than the applicant that appear to have direct or indirect authority over this establishment. Is um, a marijuana an MTC priority applicant, formerly known as an RMD priority applicant, and they do have a provisional certificate of registration for dispensing, cultivation, and processing. The applicant and the municipality executed a host community agreement on November 21st. The applicant did conduct a community outreach meeting on November 10th. We did receive a municipal response from the municipality on March 14th, stating that the applicant was in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant did submit a positive impact plan, which included the following programs, post a job fair at its retail location in Pittsburgh, and also provide three to six months um, internship training programs that will expose individuals to various components of the cannabis industry. There were no concerns arising from the background checks on any of the individuals or entities. There were also no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions, occupational license issues, or marijuana-related business interests in other jurisdictions. The applicant submitted a time plan that stated that they could be operational within three months of receiving its provisional license. Hours of operation are Sunday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. The applicant did submit all the required summaries of plans, policies, and procedures, and they were all deemed to be substantially compliant with the Commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan, which includes the following, post a job fair specifically for local veterans, and also implement a program to mentor and place qualified local veterans who have an interest in the marijuana, uh, Massachusetts cannabis industry. As this is a retail application, they did submit a plan for obtaining marijuana and marijuana products. As the applicant is a vertically integrated um, MTC that has also applied for adult use cultivation licenses, they plan on providing their own products. In the event that they are unable to provide their own products, the applicant plans to contract with existing mar um, marijuana establishments. Therefore, commission staff do recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. First, that final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state laws and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional license is subject to the appropriate license fee payment. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Flanagan. Mr. Chairman, with regards to the positive impact plan, I really want to see more information um, because it seems very light in terms of action and detail. Uh, the way that I read it, there was one job fair with a possibility, not a guarantee of anything more, and an internship program that will benefit two people but doesn't say how many sessions per year that will be. Um, so I'd like to see more in terms of the detail about how many job fairs they are, are truly expecting every year, not just if they are needed. Um, I think given the fact that there is an unemployment rate, job fairs are always needed. Um, and I'd like to know how many sessions they're going to have of this internship program. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Um, they can have a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation uh, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. I'll let the record show Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. Um, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the Commission has the approved the staff recommendation for caregiver patient connection MRN 2E. 2131 retail subject to the additional condition requested uh, by Commissioner Flanagan by a vote, a uh, unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Eagle Eyes Transport Incorporated, MTN 281320, uh, third party marijuana transporter. Um, I usually don't comment at this point, but I, I, I do want to acknowledge this is the first um, uh, third party marijuana transporter that's come up for, uh, for licensing. Uh, Given the lack of vertical integration in the adult use industry, uh, this is a really necessary function to have a well-run and a well-functioning industry. So I'm pleased that we have the interest. That being said, Mr. Bachman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
As you stated, the applicant here is Eagle Eyes Transport Incorporated. The proposed location of the business is 5 Robert J. Way in Plymouth, Mass. The license being sought here is a third party marijuana transporter. The applicant is not an applicant or licensee for any other marijuana establishment license. The individuals associated with this establishment are Raphael Richter, Catherine Rossmore, and John Fiefer, all as board members, Vita Richter and William Shields as close associates, Thomas Donegan and Stephen Weissman as capital contributors. There's no other entities other than the applicant that appear to have direct or indirect authority over this establishment. The applicant is a general applicant. Uh, the applicant in the municipality did execute a host community agreement on September 18th, 2018. The applicant did conduct a community outreach meeting on August 30th of 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response from Plymouth on May 2nd, 2019, stating that the applicant was in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant submitted a positive impact plan, which included the following. Institute hiring practices that will prioritize the hiring of individuals from disproportionate areas with a focus on Brockton and Wayham, and also host and or participate in job fairs at least once every six months. There were no concerns arising from the background checks on any individuals or entities associated with this application. There were some disclosures of civil or uh, past civil or criminal actions, occupational license issues, or marijuana related business interests in other jurisdictions. None of these disclosures raised suitability issues. The applicant did submit a timeline that stated that they could be operational within 12, re uh, 12 weeks of receiving its provisional license. Their proposed hours of operation on Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. The applicant submitted all of the required summary plans, policies, and procedures, and they were all deemed to be substantially compliant with the commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan, which includes the following. Advertise employment opportunities tailored to attract minorities, women, veterans, people with disabilities, and people of all gender identities and sexual orientations, and also host and or attend job fairs at least once every six months. Therefore, commission staff do recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. First, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. <coughs> Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional license is subject to the appropriate license fee payment. Thank you, Mr. Platten. Are there any questions or comments? Commissioner Tuttle? Thank you. Uh, sorry, hold on a second, Commissioner Platten. Um, Commissioner Tuttle is going to go first and I'll get you. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have concerns about the positive impact plan uh, goals. So the entire plan seems to be based on um, hiring people, but the goal is in 12 months that 5% of the workforce would come from disproportionately impacted communities. So if it's a 20 person workforce, I guess that means one person from uh, Brockton or Wareham or with a drug conviction as they listed. Um, and I, I think that's objectively um, unreasonable for that to be the whole plan for 12 months. Thank you. Commissioner Flanagan. Mr. Chairman, um, to add to Commissioner Title conditions, I really want this whole plan to be rewritten. I think the whole thing lacks substance. Um, hiring is their only provision, and as Commissioner Title said, the goal is to have 5% of their employees come from disproportionately impacted areas or people that have, have been affected by that. Um, I'm not sure how this plan is effectively going to impact anybody in those areas, uh, the way that it's written. So there needs to be more added to this, and I'd like the whole thing uh, resubmitted. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, can we, uh, are there other comments first? Um, Commissioner Doyle, Commissioner McBride. Then can I understand explicitly what condition, how you'd like to articulate the condition to impose on this? Either, you know, Commissioner Flanagan suggested that it needed to be re rewritten in, in its entirety. I think probably you provide a little bit more specificity to what needs to be in the rewritten plan. So, Commissioner Title, do you have suggested language? Um, I would be fine with uh, Commissioner Flanagan's suggested condition of rewriting the positive impact plan. But I'd also add, uh, including more reasonable goals. Okay. Any other comments? Then uh, can I ask for a motion please to approve the staff recommendation uh, subject to the condition, additional condition as articulated by Commissioner Slatigan and title. Have such a motion please. So moved. Can I have a second please? Uh, let the record show that Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. 
Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the commission has to approve the staff recommendation for carrier, or excuse me, for Eagle Eyes Transport Incorporated MTN 281320, third party marijuana transporter, subject to the additional conditions requested by Commissioner Flanagan in the title. Thank you. Uh, next up is In Good Health, uh, MRN 282468 Retail. Mr. Bachman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the applicant here is In Good Health Incorporated. The proposed location is 1200 West Chestnut Street in Brockton. The license being sought here is a retail license. The applicant has previously been approved for two provisional licenses also at the same location, one being a Tier 4 cultivation indoor license and the other being a product manufacturing license. The individuals associated with this application include David Noble as an executive and officer, Andrea Noble as the owner and board member, Barry Kushner as an executive and officer, Roderick Talye, Long Nguyen, and Jordan Mello as managers, and Gerald Freed as an owner and partner. There is an entity associated with this application. Um, it's CLS Holdings USA Incorporated, and they are listed as a capital contributor. The applicant here is an MTC priority applicant, and the adult use business will be co-located with the medical operation in Brockton. The applicant and municipality executed a host community agreement on June 18, 2018. They did conduct a community outreach meeting on April 23rd of 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response on April 17th of 2019, stating that the applicant was in compliance with local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant did submit a positive impact plan, which includes the following. Institute hiring practices that will prioritize the hiring of individuals from disproportionate in disproportionately impacted areas with a focus on Brockton. Secondly, hosts and or co-hosts at least one job fair each year in Brockton. And third, provide donations to identified local nonprofits and charities, including Family and Community Resources Incorporated. There were no concerns arising from the background checks on any of the individuals or entities associated with this application. There were some of the usual disclosures. However, none of those disclosures raised any suitability issues. The applicant did submit a, time, uh, a proposed timeline that says that they could be operational within five months of receiving that provisional license. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. The applicant did submit all the required summaries of plans, policies, and procedures, and they were all deemed to be substantially compliant with the commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan, which included the following, <coughs> advertise employment opportunities in diverse publications and with career centers that are tailored to reach minorities, women, veterans, individuals with disabilities, and individuals of all gender identities and sexual orientations. And secondly, host job fairs either directly or in partnership with local organizations at least once per year. As this is a retail application, they did submit a plan for obtaining marijuana and marijuana products. As the applicant is a vertically integrated MTC that has also applied for adult use cultivation of product manufacturing operations, they do plan on supplying their own product. If the need arises, they will contract with other licensed establishments for additional product. Therefore, Commission staff do recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. First, that final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the Commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state laws and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. The applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to Commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional license is subject to the appropriate license fee payment. Thank you. Are there questions or comments? Mr. Chairman? Commissioner Flanagan? Mr. Chairman, in the positive impact plan, there's only one provision that I'd like clarification on. Um, there is a provision under the program section where it says that um, they will aim to host or co-host at least one job there. I just would like more clarification on what they're actually going to do so that it would be licensed sure should they be approved. Um, we can then look at whether or not it happens. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, then can I please have a motion to approve the staff recommendation for in good health, um, subject to the uh, additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. I'll let the record Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record of the uh, commission has approved the staff recommendation for In Good Health Incorporated MRN 282468 retail by unanimous vote subject to the condition, um, additional condition request by Commissioner Flanagan. Thank you.
Uh, next up, we're going to do both these um, cases, but have separate votes. So, uh, Mayflower Medicinals Incorporated, MCN 281343, Tier 2 Indoor Cultivation, and Med uh, Mayflower Medicinals Incorporated, MPN 281480, Product Manufacturing. Mr. Potvin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> the applicant here is Mayflower Medicinals. The proposed location is 89 October Hill Road in Holliston. The two licenses being sought are that of a Tier 2 Indoor Cultivation and a Product Manufacturing license. The applicant does have an additional application that's in the queue and was submitted. It's a retail application for a proposed location of Worcester. The individuals associated with this application are John Henderson, Hadley Ford, and Randy Maslow, all as directors, Andrew Plant, Caleb Johnson, and Holly Alberti, all as close associates. There are several entities associated with this application in addition to the marijuana establishment itself. First is Ianthus Capital Management, LLC, which will be the sole shareholder and capital contributor. Ianthus Holdings Incorporated, which will be the sole, me uh, sole member and owner of the previously uh, disclosed entity, Ianthus Capital Management, LLC. And additionally, Pilgrim Rock Management, LLC, was listed as a close associate. The applicant here is an uh, MTC priority applicant. <coughs> the proposed uh, location will be co-located with an MTC in Hollison and this um, MTC has a final certificate of registration currently. The applicant and municipality did execute a host community agreement on August 20th, 2018. The applicant conducted a community outreach meeting on September 13th, 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response from Hollison on April, 4th, April 24th, 2019, stating that the applicant was in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant did submit a positive impact plan, which includes the following. Impl implement Mayflower Clone Program. Clone stands for Cannabis Learning Opportunities New England to provide skills, training, and education in the industry and business applicable areas to facilitate in uh, resume building and also employment seeking. Secondly, they plan on offering a paid fellowship program with a focus on operations, cultivation, product manufacturing, marketing and branding, and business management. And lastly, partner with neighborhoods and areas of disproportionate impact to identify and develop gardens and green spaces within their communities. There were no concerns arising from the background checks on the individuals and entities associated with this application. There were some of the usual disclosures. Uh, none of those disclosures, however, raised any suitability issues. The applicant did submit a proposed timeline that states that they could be operational within four months of receiving its provisional license. The proposed hours of operation on Monday through Sunday, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. The applicant did submit all the required summaries of policies, plans, and procedures, and they were all deemed to be substantially compliant with the commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan, which included the, uh, the following programs. Host four career fairs annually within the cities of Worcester, Lowell, and Boston, with a preference for hiring minorities, women, veterans, people with disabilities, and people of all gender identities and sexual orientations. Secondly, provide one annual cultural training on cultural sensitivity and recognizing unconscious <coughs> bias. And lastly, utilize vendors and suppliers who are also committed to diversity and inclusion. As this is a cultivation application, they did submit a cultivation plan that demonstrated their ability to comply with the commission's regulations. And it's also a product manufacturing uh, application, so they did submit a summary of the products that they plan on producing, which includes the following. Dissolving tablets and strips, tinctures, nasal oral sprays, suppositories, hash distillates, oils, waxes, shatters, butters, live resin, saps, taffies, crumbles, moon rocks, creams, salves, lotions, body butters, topicals, dermal patches, capsules, cooking oils, beverages, sauces, dips, baked goods, confections, chocolates, <coughs> candies, gums, sugars, salts, syrups, butters, mints, and teas. Therefore, commission staff do recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. First, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state laws and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, that provisional licensure is subject to the appropriate license fee payment. Thank you, Mr. Park. Questions, Commissioner Report? Um, I would like to put an a, uh, additional um, condition on this asking that they give further detail in their types of products manufactured, um, Part D, under products offered. Um, additional detail on the types of products under D that they're going to be offering, things like in the past that we've talked about, flavors, types, um, descriptions. Thank you. Other comments or questions? 
Then may I ask please for a motion to approve that recommendation subject to the condition requested by Commissioner McBride? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Uh, let's record sure Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, let me be precise. Um, the motion I'm asking for is to approve the staff recommendation for Mayflower Medicinals MCN 281343 Tier 2 Indoor Cultivation. So moved. Thank you. Um, let the record show that the uh, motion was made by Commissioner Doyle and seconded by Commissioner Title. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the Commission unanimously approved staff recommendation for Mayflower Medicinals Incorporated MCN 281343 Tier 2 Indoor Cultivation subject to the additional condition requested. Uh, I'm sorry, this would not be subject to that. Um, so uh, let the record show that we approve the staff recommendation unanimously. Now let me ask for a second motion to approve uh, Mayflower Medicinals Incorporated MPN 281480 for product manufacturing this time with the additional condition requested by Commissioner McBride. Can I have such a motion please? So moved. Can I have a second please? Second. Let the record show that Commissioner McBride made the uh, motion to approve seconded by Commissioner Doyle. Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Oh, hold on a second. Did we lose you? Sorry, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so uh, how what, how far back do we need to go, Commissioner Flanagan? I don't. I'm good. You're good? Okay. We're right now voting on uh, the to approve the staff recommendation for uh, Mayflower Medicinals Incorporated MPN 281480 <coughs> for product manufacturing, uh, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner McBride. Um, yeah, I heard that. Okay, great. Um, so let's start again. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Thank you. Let the record show that the uh, Commission unanimously approved the staff recommendation for Mayflower Medicinals Incorporated MPN 281480 product manufacturing subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner McBride. Thank you. Um, can we get uh, the slide? We're not, we, somehow we got off of um, presentation mode. Thank you. I don't think we need to slow down for that. But. Uh, Next, uh, we have Mission uh, Massachusetts. I believe you have to recuse yourself again, yes. Commissioner Title. Thank you very much, uh, Erica. Uh, so uh, there are four. We're going to do the first three together. They're co-located, and they'll do the fourth one. We'll have separate votes, obviously, on each. So uh, let me ask you, Mr. Poppin, if you could uh, go through the staff recommendation for Mission, uh, Mission Massachusetts Incorporated. MCN 281-288 for Tier 1 Indoor Cultivation, uh, Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MPN 281-312 for Product Manufacturing, Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MRN 281-259 for Retail. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you stated, the applicant is Mission Mass Incorporated. The proposed location is 640 Lincoln Street, Suite 200 in Worcester, Mass. The licenses being sought here are Tier 1 Indoor Cultivation License, Product Manufacturing License, and Retail License. The applicant is an applicant uh, for another marijuana establishment license type. It's another retail location, which would be followed up next. This application will be submitted for a proposed location in Brookline. The individuals associated with this establishment are Andrew Thutt as an executive and officer, Kari Ravelson as a manager, Josh Rosen and Lise Rossman as close associates. The entity, there are other entities associated with this establishment other than the applicant itself. They include Mission Partners USA LLC, which owns and controls 100% of the voting rights of Mission Mass Incorporated, and Forefront Holdings LLC, which is a parent company. The applicant is an MTC priority applicant, and the proposed uh, business here will be co-located with the medical use business in um, Worcester. The MTC does have a final certificate of registration for dispensing, cultivation, and processing. The applicant and municipality did execute a host community agreement on September 28th of 2018. The applicant did uh, conduct a community outreach meeting on April 24th of 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response from the municipality on May 2nd, 2018, stating that the applicant was in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant did submit a positive impact plan, which includes the following, conduct at least two industry-specific educational recruitment seminars annually, institute hiring practices that pri prioritize the hiring of individuals from Worcester and um, Boston. Lastly, host quarterly in-store donation drives, including direct giving and ongoing food, toiletries, and clothing drives to benefit charities. There were no concerns arising from the background checks on any of the individuals and entities associated with this application. 
There were some of the usual disclosures. However, none of these disclosures raised any suitability issues. The applicant states that it could be operational within two months of receiving its provisional license. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. The applicant did submit all of the required summaries of plans, policies, and procedures, and they were all deemed to be substantially compliant with the commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan, which includes the following. Participate in career fairs in underrepresented and minority communities two times annually. Provide cultural training on cultural sensitivity and recognizing unconscious bias at least once per year. And utilize suppliers who are committed to diversity and inclusion. As this is a cultivation application, they did submit a cultivation plan that demonstrated their ability to comply with the commission's regulations. They also did submit um, a list of proposed items that they plan on producing, which includes the following flour, pre-rolls, vape cartridges, wax, oil, oral tinctures, tropical salves, <coughs> mints, and capsules. Lastly, as this is also a retail application, they did submit a plan for obtaining marijuana and marijuana products. And as the applicant is a vertically integrated MTC that has also applied for cultivation and product manufacturing adult use licenses, they plan on producing and obtaining their products from themselves. However, if the need arises, it will contract with other licensed establishments for additional product. Therefore, commission staff do recommend issuing provisional licenses with the following conditions. First, that final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. Secondly, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional licenses are subject to the appropriate license fee payments. Thank you, Mr. Poppin. Questions or comments? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Flanagan. Under the positive impact plan, um, it states that uh, mission will assist individuals from disproportionately impacted areas. And I'd just like clarification on what the word assist means and the types of services that they'll be providing. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Flanagan? Nope. Any other comments or questions? Um, then can I please ask for a uh, motion to approve, and we're going to go through with these individually, um, um, to approve the staff recommendation for Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MCN 281, 288, Tier 1 Indoor Cultivation, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the uh, commission unanimously approve the staff recommendation for Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MCN 281288 Tier 1 Indoor Cultivation subject to the uh, additional uh, condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. We we'll voted four in favor. Commissioner Doyle, Hoffman, McBride, and Flanagan with Commissioner Title recused. Uh, next, let me ask for a uh, motion to approve the staff recommendation for Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MPN 281312 product manufacturing, again subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. Can I have such a motion, please? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show that Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner... What's your name again? Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the Commission approved the staff recommendation for Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MPN 281312 product manufacturing by a vote of four in favor. Commissioners Doyle, Hoffman, McBride, and Flanagan with Commissioner Title recused, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. <coughs> Let me next ask for a motion to approve Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MRN 281259 retail, subject again to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. Can I have such a motion, please? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Let the record show Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show the Commission approved the staff recommendation for Mission Massachusetts Incorporated MRN 281259 retail uh, with a vote of four uh, in favor. Commissioner Doyle, Hoffman, McBride, Flanagan. Commissioner Title recused, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the last of the Mission, Mass, uh, Massachusetts um, applications. Uh, and sorry, it's being blocked. <laughs> is, is there a ch whose camera is that? Part. Oh, it's ours. <laughs> 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 <They're not. laughs> I get it. No, I got. I got the ours. I, sure. I have to flip it back and forth. That's fine. I, I can handle this. I'm just lazy. Uh, so. <laughs> Mr. Bachman, Mission Massachusetts Incorporated, MRN 282028 Retail. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you stated, the applicant here is Mission Mass Incorporated. The proposed location is 1024B Commonwealth Ave in Brookline. The license being sought here is a retail license. As previously stated, they were just recently approved for provisional licenses for a retail location, a cultivation operation, and product manufacturing operation. Uh, the same individuals and entities that were previously disclosed are also associated with this application. Again, this applicant is an MTC priority applicant. However, the adult use location in this instance will not be co-located with a medical establishment. The applicant and municipality did execute a host community agreement on October 31st of 2018. The applicant did conduct a community outreach meeting on September 12th of 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response from the municipality on March 5th of 2019, stating that the applicant was in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. The positive impact plan was submitted on this application. It's the same positive impact plan that was previously discussed. Uh, the suitability review, there were no concerns arising from these, the background checks on these individuals and entities. There are also some of the usual disclosures. However, again, none of the disclosures raised any suitability issues. The applicant did submit a timeline for this location, and they state that they could be operational within two months of receiving its provisional license. The proposed hours of operation at this location on Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Again, the applicant did submit all the required summaries of policies, plans, and procedures, and all those summaries were determined to be substantially compliant with the Commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan um, that was previously discussed on the previous three applications. It's the same plan. As this is a retail-only application, they did submit a plan for obtaining marijuana and marijuana products. Again, it's the same plan that they submitted on the previous retail application. Therefore, Commission staff do recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. First, that final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the Commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with uh, applicable state laws and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to Commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional license is subject to the appropriate license fee payment. Thank you, Mr. Poppin. Uh, Commissioner uh, Flanagan, I'm, I'm presuming you would like the same condi um, condition as you requested on the previous three Mission Massachusetts uh, applications? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Anything else? Nope. Any other comments or questions? Okay, then can I have a motion please to approve the staff recommendation for Miss Mission Massachusetts Incorporated? What did you say about that camera? Um, MCN 2817, uh, nope, I blew it. Uh, MRN 282028 retail, uh, subject to the uh, condition requested by Commissioner uh, Flanagan. So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show that Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman, aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Okay, let the record show that the Commission approved the staff recommendation for Mission Massachusetts MRN 282028 retail. Uh, by a vote of four in favor, Commissioners Doyle, Hoffman, McBride, and Flanagan. Commissioner Tyler was recused and uh, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Flanagan. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have four, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, for Tricome Health. Is that is that the correct uh, pronunciation? That's how I pronounce it. Yes. Okay. Um, I apologize. If, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Will. Um, we're going to do three that are co-located, and then we'll do a fourth separately. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so uh, Mr. Uh, Ms. Popkin, could you walk us through Tricome Health Corporation, MCN 281738, Tier 3 Indoor Cultivation, Tricome Health Corp, MPN 281507, Product Manufacturing, and Tricome Health Corp, MRN 281774, Retail? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you stated, the applicant here is Tricome Health Corporation. The proposed location is 475 Kenneth Welch Drive in Lakeville, Mass. The licenses being sought are a Tier 3 indoor cultivation license, product manufacturing license, and retail license. The applicant is an applicant for another marijuana establishment license. It's a retail license, and the application has been submitted, and it's for the location of Worcester. The individuals associated with this establishment are <coughs> Alexander Mazin and Nellie Israel, both as directors, John Nottomney and Kenneth Wolf as close associates. There is one entity other than the applicant itself that is associated with this application, and that is Green Peak LLC, which is the sole shareholder of Tricome Health Corporation. The applicant is an MTC priority applicant, and the proposed location, the pros, uh, proposed adult use operations will be co-located with the medical use operations in Lakeville. The applicant and municipality did execute a host community agreement on September 25th, 2018. 
the applicant did conduct a community outreach meeting on July 19th of 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response from the municipality on March 15th of 2019, stating that the applicant was in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant did submit a positive impact plan, which includes the following, conduct industry specific educational trainings in Worcester, and secondly, offer monthly seminars on interview preparation, resume building, and <coughs> industry knowledge. There were no concerns arising from the background checks on any of the individuals and entities associated with this application. There are also none of the usual disclosures. The applicant did submit a proposed timeline that states that they could be operational within seven months of receiving this provisional license. The proposed hours of operation on Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The applicant did submit all the required summaries of plans, policies, and procedures, and all the summaries were determined to be substantially compliant with the commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan, which includes the following, hiring event at least once a year with a preference for hiring minorities, women, veterans, people with disabilities, and people of all gender identities and sexual orientations. Second, coordinate and partner with diverse organizations for networking and advertising employment opportunities. And third, internally promote diverse individuals. As this is a cultivation application, they did submit a cultivation plan that demonstrated their ability to comply with the commission's regulations. They also submitted a summary of the products that they plan on producing, which includes the following. Dissolving tablets and strips, tinctures, nasal oral sprays, suppositories, hash distillates, oils, waxes, shatters, butters, live resins, saps, taffies, crumbles, moon rocks, creams, salves, lotions, body butters, topicals, dermal patches, capsules, cooking oils, beverages, sauces, dips, baked goods, confections, chocolates, candies, gums, sugars, Salts, syrups, butters, mints, and teas. The applicant did submit a plan for obtaining marijuana and marijuana products, as they are a vertically integrated MTC that has also applied for adult use cultivation and product manufacturing licenses. They plan on producing their own product. If the need arises, they will contract with other licensed establishments for additional product. Therefore, commission staff do recommend issuing provisional licenses with the following conditions. First, that the final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state laws and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional licenses are subject to the appropriate license fee payments. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Um, any comments or questions? Commissioner McBride? Um, I'd like to request the additional condition for information on the products that they plan on manufacturing in more detail. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Commissioner Tyler? Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a concern about the diversity plan. Um, I think the positive impact plan actually um, is great in terms of goals and measurement, but the diversity plan um, has a goal to increase um, certain populations without any uh, quantitative measurement, as well as a goal to reach out to certain organizations, but without um, a number in terms of what types of events or partnerships they expect. So they should have a number on at least one of those, preferably both. Thank you, Commissioner Tom. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Then uh, I'm going to ask for uh, a motion, and there are going to be separate conditions uh, based upon the type of license. So starting with the Tricone Health Corporation MCN 281738, Tier 3 Indoor Cultivation, I would like to ask for a motion to approve the staff recommendation subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Title. Can I have such, can I have such a motion? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show that Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Okay, let the record show that the Commission unanimously approved staff recommendation for Tricome Health Corporation MCN 281738 Tier 3 Indoor Cultivation subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Title. I'd like to then ask for a motion to approve the staff recommendation for Tricome Health Corporation MP 507 Product Manufacturing subject to the condition requested by Commissioner Title plus subject to the condition requested by Commissioner McBride. Can I have such a motion, please? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Doyle. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman, aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. 
Let the record show that the uh, commission unanimously approved the staff recommendation for Tricomb Health Corp. MPN 281507 product manufacturing, subject to the additional conditions requested by Commissioners Title and McBride. Let me next ask for a motion to approve the staff recommendation for Tricomb Health Corp. MRN 281774 retail, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Title. Can I have such a motion, please? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the uh, Commission unanimously approved the staff recommendation for Tricom Health Corp. MRN 281774 retail, subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Title. Um, thank you. I think we have one last then uh, for also for Tricom Health Corp, but uh, separate location, MRN 282319 retail. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Poffin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you stated, the applicant here again is Tricom Health Corporation. The proposed location is 62-68 West Boylston Street in Worcester, Mass. The license being sought here is a retail license. Uh, the applicant was just previously approved for provisional licenses for a tier three indoor cultivation operation, product manufacturing operation, and retail operation located in Lakeville. The individuals and entities associated with this application are the same as was previously disclosed on the previous applications. The applicant here, again, is a MTC priority applicant. However, this adult use location will not be co-located with an MTC. The applicant and municipality did execute a host community agreement on January 28th of 2019. The applicant did conduct a community outreach meeting on August 1st of 2018. The commission did receive a municipal response from the municipality on March 26th of 2019, stating that the applicant was in compliance with local ordinances and bylaws. The applicant did submit a positive impact plan, which is the same plan as was previously disclosed. Again, for suitability, there were no concerns arising from the background checks on any of the individuals or entities associated with this application. The applicant did submit a proposed timeline for this location, and they state that they could be operational within seven months of receiving their provisional license. The proposed hours of operation at this location on Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Again, the applicant on this application submitted all the required summaries of policies, plans, and procedures, and they were all deemed to be substantially compliant with the Commission's regulations. The applicant did submit a diversity plan for this application, which is the same diversity plan that was previously disclosed. The application, they did submit a plan for obtaining marijuana and marijuana products, as the applicant, again, is a vertically integrated MTC that has also applied for adult use um, cultivation of product manufacturing licenses. They plan on producing and supplying their own product. However, if the need arises, it will contract with other licensed establishments. Therefore, Commission staff do recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. First, that final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the Commission's regulations. Second, final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with applicable state laws and local codes, ordinances, and bylaws. Third, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to Commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional license is subject to the appropriate license fee payment. Okay, thank you, Mr. Parkman. Um, I'm going to assume, Commissioner Tyler, you would like to apply the same condition? Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right, then can I have a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation for Tricomb Health Care, uh, Health Corp, excuse me, MRN 282319 retail subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Title? Can I have such a motion, please? So moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Let the record show Commissioner Doyle made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Let the record show that the uh, Commission unanimously approved the staff recommendation for Tricomb Health Corporation MRN 282319 retail subject to the additional condition requested by Commissioner Title. Mr. Poppin, I think that is it for provisional licenses, is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. And this is the appropriate time to thank you and the uh, other members of the licensing staff and the enforcement team. Uh, so prodigious work both you guys are uh, operating under, so thank you very much for uh, you. all your effort. Thank really you. appreciate it. Um, if it's okay with the uh, commission, um, I'd like to um, go through the next item on the agenda, which is the uh, change of ownership request, and then we'll take a break after that. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Executive Director, who's going to lead this part of the conversation? Okay. Uh, Ms. Proctor Ms. again. Well, then I guess my thanks were premature. I'll, I'll, I'll reserve judgment until I see how you do on this one. <laughs> thank you for thank you very much. 
so the next item on the agenda is um, a change of ownership application from Sierra Naturals Incorporated. Um, Mr. Bodman, if you would lead the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> As you stated, uh, Sierra Naturals Incorporated has submitted an application for a change in ownership and control. The licenses that would be affected by this change are uh, MC281252, it's a tier three cultivation license, MP281303, a product manufacturing license, and MX281310, which is a transportation license. Additionally, there will be three um, medical marijuana treatment center licenses that would also be affected, and they are RMD245, RMD325, RMD625, and for some contacts, these are the numbers that get associated to a um, uh, medical marijuana treatment center in the virtual gateway in the medical marijuana system. The individuals requesting to acquire ownership or control interests over these licenses include the following. Jonathan Sandelman as a director, Jennifer Drake as the chief operating officer, Mark Smith as a treasurer, Charles Miles, Steve Menzies, Mark Pitchford, Chris Burgrave, all as directors, and Carmelo Morelli as the chief financial officer. There are entities associated with this change in ownership and control that would acquire some ownership or control interest over Sierra Naturals Incorporated. They are CSAC Acquisition Incorporated. They would be the owner of Sierra Naturals Incorporated. CSAC Holdings Incorporated. This would be a holder of 100% of the voting control and majority ownership of CSAC Acquisition Incorporated, which is the previous entity that was disclosed. Cannabis Strategies Acquisition Corp, which is CSAC, would be the holder of 100% of the control and equity of CSAC Holdings Incorporated. Mercer Park CBLP would be a holder of 10% of CSAC's ownership and approximately 63% of CSAC's voting interest. The last entity is Mercer Park CBGP LLC, which is the sole general partner of Mercer Park CBLP. The background checks were conducted on all the individuals and entities disclosed within this application. No suitability issues were discovered. The individuals and entities that are requesting ownership and control over the licenses do not appear to have exceeded any ownership or control limits over any particular license or uh, cultivation canopy limit. Commission staff did conduct an organizational inspection into the individuals and entities associated with this change in ownership and control requests. Commission staff found no issues or inconsistencies with the information that was provided to the commission in its, app in its application. Therefore, commission staff recommend review and decision on this request for change in ownership and control, and if, and if approved, request that the approval be subject to the following conditions. First, that the licensee and the individuals and entities associated with this change in ownership and control may now effectuate any outstanding business agreements related to this change. The licensee will notify the commission when the change in ownership and control has occurred. Second, the licensee is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with the commission's regulations. Third, the licensee remains suitable for licensure. Fourth, the licensee shall cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. And lastly, the licensure is subject to notification to the commission of any update to written operations plans required under the commission's regulations. After effectuating this change in ownership and control, and if applicable, shall give commission staff adequate opportunity to review said plans at their business location or the location where any such plans are maintained in the normal cost of business. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Bachman. Um I'd like to uh, start, if I could, before I uh, answer comments and questions for the commissioners. Uh, can, uh, and I don't know whether it would be you or, or Mr. Bea, um, could you describe the diligence that was done in terms of uh, the background checks on the individuals and the entities that are associated with this transaction? Uh, so it is a, it's a two part, um, it's a couple of parts actually. <laughs> um, uh, speaking solely to suitability standards, yes. um, it's the same background checks, the same fingerprinting that is conducted on every applicant that comes before you. Okay, thank you. Um, that is reviewed by enforcement staff. Okay, thank you. Um, again, with the addition of individuals and entities, just like any other application, we're ensuring that the people and entities that are listed are not um, going to violate the commission's regulations on any ownership limits or cultivation canopy limits. Um, no individual entity can have ownership or control over more than 100,000 square feet of canopy. In addition to that, our, our investigative staff did do a due diligence, which I will allow Patrick to discuss. Thank you very much. Mr. Bayer. The purpose of our uh, due diligence investigation is to ensure the information provided to the commission 
by the applicant is, is truthful and accurate, and that was part of this investigation. It's also to identify persons who might have uh, other interests with other cannabis uh, uh, businesses, um, either in the Commonwealth or elsewhere, um, keeping an eye on the uh, our regulations for the, the three uh, store limit. Mm -hmm. Part of that is reviewing all the applications and, and uh, verifying all the information within. Uh, we also ask for specific documents, um, in this case, investor contracts and management agreements. We were assured by both uh, Sierra Naturals and CSAC that none exist. Um, CSAC is a publicly traded company in Canada. The mm -hmm. Canadian Securities Exchange is a very transparent organization. Uh, I was able to review approximately 100 documents um, through the uh, Canadian Securities Exchange. There were uh, filings, um, shareholder votes, um, and other financial documents um, that were all reviewed uh, as part of this due diligence on the company. And no information was developed to indicate that there are people um, with interests other than what's listed on the application and that there are going to be no, no cap violations. Another part of the investigation was to interview key persons involved. Um, the CEO of both Sierra Naturals and CSAC were, were interviewed. Um, they both stated that they understood our, uh, our cap and would abide by it. Thank you. Appreciate that. Other comments or questions from the Commissioner? Commissioner Tyler? Mr. Chairman, after reviewing and examining the materials available, uh, I'm not prepared to vote yes because I would like the Commission to talk further about the process for reviewing these transactions. I believe it's in the public interest to scrutinize these transactions and specifically to request and examine all of the legal documents that address this transfer of ownership, whether public or not. And in this instance, I want to thank the staff. I believe that you've gone above and beyond um, to review this transaction, to review 100 documents. Um, and I have full confidence in the staff, and I appreciate it. But as I look ahead, as this is the first time we uh, review a transaction like this, I'm thinking about establishing a fair and consistent process, and I'm not sure that this is sustainable. Um, the reason I'm focused on the process is because there is a long queue of these changes to be reviewed. I expect, I know some of them will be extremely complex, and I think in the same way that we have decided that background checks are important enough that we need to retain <coughs> outside expertise with the tools and resources and narrow focus necessary to do the job efficiently and effectively, I would suggest that we consider the same here. And so, I will be prepared to vote yes when I have, again, in front of me, all of the relevant agreements, as well as an expert opinion and review. Thank you. Uh, can I get um, additional comments or questions? We'll certainly take that up. But, but. Any other? I guess uh, I have a question for you. Uh, Two questions for you, Commissioner Todd, maybe three or five, but let's, let's start with two. Um, one is, can you be as explicit as possible, perhaps you've already been, in terms of what additional information or analysis you require from the staff before you be comfortable voting? I mean, you've said all, all available documents, but I just want to make sure that we're, if we do decide to go that path, that we're giving the staff as much specific guidance as we possibly can. All of the documents that address this transfer of ownership, whether public or not. Okay. And then, second of all, uh, if I heard you correctly, Mr. Bay, we, we asked for all those documents and were told they did not exist. Or did, what, is, what, is your, was your request consistent with what Commissioner Title just articulated, or was there some gap? Uh, I just want to, if they've already said that there are no other documents, that's what I'm trying to understand. I was told by both CIRA and CSAC that there are no investor contracts or management agreements. Um, so I wasn't asking for specifically investor contracts mm -hmm. and management agreement. I was asking for all documents addressing the transfer. Okay. Um, 
I'm just trying to, I'm trying to just think about it, have all documents. I, th I think we have to be a little bit more precise. I mean, I'm not sure how, I'm just putting myself in my private sector days about how I could respond to all documents as opposed to these specific types of documents. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not disagreeing, I'm just, I just want to make sure that again, if we decide to table it, that the staff has clear guidance on what to do. And if it's asking for all documents for the transaction, um, I'm just not, um, I'm not sure how that could be complied with, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Patrick. Well, with anything, um, there's a lot of papers. Um, we could always ask for more documents, but I think we should be very specific with what we ask for. Um, otherwise, we can end up with a blizzard of paper that fills up boxes, and, and we don't have that kind of time to uh, review that, that sort of thing. It, we, it's just not practical. So I think if we're going to ask for more documents, we should be very specific what we're asking for, and um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be happy to pursue that. Um, so I recognize the volume of information that might be provided um, with, that, with that request. Um, and just to repeat myself, I have full confidence in the staff's ability uh, but I also realize that it's the same staff that is already handling uh, applications and inspections and everything else. Don't so, forget renewals. And, and renewals, absolutely. And so um, that's why I, I specifically noted that um, I think we should consider, as we do with background checks, um, outside tools and resources. Um, in terms of documents that address, legal documents that address the transfer of ownership, um, I'm, I would welcome other comments, but going back to my private sector days as an attorney in this industry, I think that's a, a reasonable, okay. spe specific request. Okay. Um, so let, let us ask for other comments. I, I, I just wanted to, work, Brock, the second part of what you're suggesting in terms of um, considering outside um, assistance on this uh, has been discussed both with the investigations team, with the executive director, um, and if it's okay with the rest of the commission, I think Commissioner McBride and I have volunteered to lead the effort to evaluate alternatives. So okay. that will be underway shortly. Uh, already discussed, as I said, with the executive director and with, uh, with the investigations team. So let's push that aside for a second and get back to the issue about what is the nature of the request that we make for documents. Are there any comments or questions, uh, <coughs> thoughts about Commissioner Title's request? Commissioner Doyle? A question. Um, if the request is to put off acting on the pending requests for change of ownership until the process that okay. Chairman Hoffman and Commissioner McBride described, I just, if you know, because I realize you may have only just started this effort, do we have a timeline for, no, okay. No, I, I, I was going to, that, I think that is an issue that we need to discuss, which is that there is no timeline. Um, we literally um, have had this conversation over the last few days, and uh, over the last couple of days, Commissioner McBride and I volunteered. Is there, were you assigned or volunteered? I volunteered. Oh, she volunteered. I think I might have been assigned. But in any case, um, so no, there is no timeline yet. You were yet. volunteered. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I, I think that is that is an issue in terms of the timeliness of our response to, to not just this one but the others that are in the queue. Um, and we are not bound by any external deadline on this. I think, however, in our decision making, we should be cognizant that these deals do some of them do have timelines that um, we will be causing economic impact if we don't approve or disapprove, or disapprove within a certain timeline. And I'm not suggesting, I'm being very careful here, I'm not suggesting that we need to operate on any other timeline other than doing this right and diligently. But I do think we need, in making our decisions, need to be cognizant of that. And I, I think, I don't know government procurement as well as I probably should after a year and change or however long it's been, um, it seems like longer than that. Um, but it's going to take us a while if, to get make a decision about if and whom to hire as an outside uh, advisor on this topic. Mr. Chairman. Yes, um, Commissioner Tao. It has been included in our regulations and policies uh, the entire time that <coughs> these deals are subject to regulatory approval. Yes. Um, and at this time, with no agreements whatsoever um, to examine 
uh, the answer that there are no investor contracts or uh, management agreements is not acceptable. No, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, agree, I don't disagree with you. I was making, I think, a different point. I think I was picking up on what Commissioner Doyle was suggesting. Um, I agree with you about the agreements. Sorry for the redundancy. Um, what I am not comfortable with, at least until we talk further and debate um, and discuss, is saying until we have an outside expert in place or an outside agency in place to do the evaluation that we should not consider approving any of these changes to application. That's where I was disagreeing. But absolutely agree with you with respect to additional agreements. Can I have uh, other comments or thoughts on this? Commissioner Brown. to move ahead with this today. However, we need to make sure that this is a fair process for everybody going forward. And that means that we need to create a standard. Correct. And I, I, we can't be treating one entity different than another entity. Correct. So um, uh, while I am, I have faith in the due diligence review that was done in this instance, um, including in the um, affidavit and affirmation that we received um, about the issue of control um, from the parties. I think that if what Commissioner Title is suggesting is that we put a pin in it um, and not move forward with any of these transactions, then that is, um, you know, that's a motion that should be made and that we should consider and that we should take a vote on. And because this is setting the course, you know, moving forward sure. for how we are going to treat not just the um, particular entity in front of us, but all entities moving forward. And if it is that we need to go through a process of identifying uh, a third party vendor to help us with um, doing the analysis, then let's have that conversation um, and make a decision on it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Flagg, I, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Um, you don't need to comment, but since I can't see you, um, do you have any comments on this topic before uh, we start? I start asking for a motion? Not this time. Thank you. So I, I see one of two potential motions, and I'm going to ask you, Commissioner Title, uh, which it, or maybe both that you prefer to make up. Uh, one possible motion is to um, table, for the time being, this change of ownership request subject to um, the staff at DASH um, asking for documents according to the outline that you articulated, um, and that's the motion. Um, second motion is, I think, more akin to what Commissioner uh, McBride, uh, I don't think was suggesting, but what offering is an alternative, which is that we put a pin in this entirely, not just for CIRA, but for all changes of ownership until such time as we have a both formal process articulated as well as if we so decide, um, an outside vendor chosen and in place to help with that. So those are two, and they're not, they're not contradictory, so we can do both, or we can do one or the other. So I'll ask you which motion, if or, or both, that you'd like to uh, make. I'd like to make the, the first motion, um, and then perhaps at the next meeting or whenever we hear back from the staff. Um, and so the motion is to request all legal documents that address this transfer of ownership, whether public or not. Thank you. Um, can I have a second for that motion, please? I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, let the record show that the uh, motion uh, was made by Commissioner Title and seconded by Commissioner Doyle. Um, Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Well, I want to have discussion on the motion for a second. Please, go ahead. Okay, can you clarify just this is it? Can me generally... I think you probably need to just get a little closer to the microphone, Commissioner Doyle. When we say public or not, what are we saying? And the reason that I ask that is there is an issue in public records law yeah. with regard to Massachusetts not having the same protection for businesses that the federal government does. So the second that we get a, um, a document from someone we are uh, required to give it out upon request unless there is a specific exemption in the public records law that permits us to withhold it. And the one thing that the federal government, I shouldn't say the one thing, a thing mm -hmm. that the federal government has that we don't 
is an ability to determine whether something has um, confidential business information, trade secrets, et cetera. We don't have that in Massachusetts law. So we could potentially get information in from the company and have to give it out again to someone who's requesting it for a, a competitor asking it for anti-competitive reasons. So I just like clarification about what documents in particular, when we were talking about whether public or not, what the, what's the not? So uh, I'm open to amendments on this motion, um, but the reason it's phrased that way is <coughs> if we, for example, list um, investor agreements, management agreements, uh, those don't exist apparently, um, purchase agreement, uh, there's the concern is that there would be other information that we're then missing. Um, I understand that, I understand the concern about public records. I would have to review um, the exemptions, but the parallel here is we also have confidential information, social security numbers, fingerprints, um, and when we receive public records requests, we make our arguments for why those should be confidential. I would think the same would apply to trade. It, it, that's the problem, it doesn't in Massachusetts because I've had to do this before in the medical program. We just don't have the ability to withhold that information. Um, we asked for it, the commission asked for it specifically for our program um, in one of the farm reports, but you know, I don't think it's happened so, yet. I would be open to an, yeah, I would be open to an amendment um, in which the agreements could be redacted for trade secrets. I, I, we wouldn't have the legal ability to. No, we, we can't. Our redact. request. I think you're saying our request to the um, acquiring company or to, to the entity applying for the chance of ownership. Our request would allow them to redact in response to us. Is I think what Commissioner Title was oh, yes. suggesting. Okay. Yes. Let me just think that through for a minute, because the concern I have is then we may be defeating the purpose if we say redact something that you think is a trade secret. You know. So, Commissioner Todd, would you, would you go ahead, Commissioner McBride? This, um, I mean, this was something that we are, <laughs> this is happening in real time right now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think that we are, I, I would ask us to take a break right now. That's because fine. I think that we are in a place where um, maybe a couple of us need to think for a second that's, about that's the motion that's that is that's absolutely fine. before us. Anybody have a problem with that? I think that's a great suggestion, Commissioner nope. McBride. Because okay. this so. hadn't been, this wasn't kind of raised as something that was prior to like five minutes ago. So. I, 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 it's great. So uh, it is now, check your watches, but I have uh, I have 11, 17. Um, I, how long would you like? 20 minutes. So uh, can we meet, uh, we will reconvene at 20 minutes to 12, but we are in recess right now.